Good morning. <laughs> it's a beautiful morning. The garden just looks so much fresher with a lick of paint on the bits that need it. I would recommend painting every springtime on a nice dry day. So much better. Hi guys, you know what? It's so hot. I had a lovely sunbathe. I was reading a book, chilling, and I fell asleep. So I <laughs> woke up and had a shower and just changed my clothes and, and I have so much things to share with you. So in the season of spring, this is like the perfect time to do your garden. It's the perfect time to get stuck in and do all the chores. I'm burning some essential oil. I've got some white sage incense sticks that I'm gonna burn. Just to, oh, it smells so good. Just to zone out and chill, you know what I mean? Okay, so essentials, definitely 100%. You need to tidy your garden, weed, sort out all the yucky stuff that you don't wanna do. But, to make sure your plants really flourish, you need to get rid of pests. Your garden needs to be, not obviously, fully bug free because we want to have pollinators such as bees and butterflies and so on but we don't want any fungus on our leaves we don't want anything eating and destroying what you spent so long growing and cultivating so I have fungus clear ultra and this is a systemic 
fungicide for the control of fungal diseases on roses and other flowering and ornamental plants, trees, shrubs and conifers in the garden, the greenhouse, conservatory and in the home. So this has got raving reviews and I want to protect my roses. I have a lot of house plants. I brought some of them out into the garden just to get a bit of the sunshine because they'll benefit from it. And baby bio house plant bug killer is brilliant. I don't have any like bugs destroying my plants, so I'd recommend this too. This is a water pressure spray. Water pressure sprays are really good to put like your fungicides into and give the plants a really good burst of treatment. I'll be using this later to show you. But I also like organic insecticides. Sodium bicarbonate soda is fantastic. You can use it to control slugs and snails and you can also use it to clean in the garden and it can also reduce the smell of your compost area. There's loads of other things that you can do with bicarbonate soda. Now this bad boy here, organic neem oil. I don't like the smell of it. I don't like the smell of neem oil, but I like what it does. I dilute this neem oil with water and a little bit of Castile soap, garden soap, and it gets rid of a lot of bugs that have almost tried to destroy my fuchsias, my rose plants, and so on. Neem oil is fantastic, but if you can't tolerate the smell, I mean, I understand, but it's brilliant. It's always good to have apple cider vinegar. This is organic apple cider vinegar. This is really good. Um, when you're mixing your own insecticide, for example, this is a really good mist spray. I normally put about three capfuls of apple cider vinegar, an almond oil, neem oil, olive oil, You have to put a little bit of vinegar or witch hazel in a mix with oil so it just kind of like so that it just works well because oil and water doesn't mix but the acid in the apple cider vinegar it kind of like evens it out then I add essential oils lemongrass is very good citronella oil peppermint oil invest in essential oils this is eucalyptus lemon I love the smell of it oh, so good it smells a little bit like citronella oil and I put at least 10 drops in definitely test areas of your plants because you don't want to burn them or destroy them or damage them or whatever Then I fill it with water, give it a good shape, good, give it a good mix. And then I spray. It's got a lovely aroma too. So these are my essentials for insecticide. I also have another bottle. I like to recycle, so this is an old cleaning bottle. But on here I've written neem oil, castile soap, lemongrass insecticide so I know what I mixed in and I just use like a sharpie pen, permanent marker
these are a gardener's best friends insecticides okay so that's my job today I'm gonna just go around and blitz all my plants and just get them protected and yeah bug free because I have a lot of amphids aphids I have a lot of aphids on my beautiful rose plant and they are there, there's a lot there's a huge population of them and I need to reduce that completely okay so another anti-bug remedy which is really good are crushed eggshells I have been crushing these for one year one year I put them in a pestle and mortar and I just crush 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 every time I use eggs and and now I'm gonna put them in this and crushed eggshells are very nutritional for the ground for the earth but snails and slugs do not like them it's like going over glass or something they can't stand them so it's really it's a very good organic pest control and a source of nutrient for your soil after one year lost them whoops whoops the skirt of my dress has caught the the shells the eggshells good I like containers like this because you can just keep them fresh and you can just use them as and when. Okay, so that's all the bug control, I think, out of the way. Yeah. It's such a beautiful day. It really is beautiful. This is an old body shop box that I just put my essential oils in. Okay, so another essentials. We want nutrition for our plants. They need a good feed. They need um they just they need to be healthy. So once a week I use Miracle Grow and this is a really fantastic if you can find this this is a fantastic attachment to your garden hose so I sometimes alternate I put Miracle Grow feed in here I can put Epsom salts seaweed tomato feed all the other things I'm going to show you and you basically attach it to your hose pipe and you have a section on here that says feed and water okay or just water and it will push the fertilizer through the hose pipe water and it comes out it's fantastic this is brilliant it was really hard to find I bought it I think off eBay or Amazon so have a look for this okay you can get this from like the pound store this is rooting powder if you want to start propagating your plants, your vines, um, cuttings, this is fantastic. You can also dip your cuttings in honey to help propagation, but this is like one pound, I think, and it's quite helpful, especially if you're going around um, pruning and trimming things and you want to propagate things, root and powder or honey. banana green banana 
ripe banana or plantain is fantastic food for your plants. You catch some rainwater. I use this. Okay, so I use this funky water bottle, <laughs> a water flask, because it's massive. And I stick the banana inside like that. You leave that in there for about three days and this is the best, sweetest smell, but it's a really good drink for your house plants and your garden plants, really good. So don't throw away your bananas. I put it in whole. People put the banana, um, people put the banana skin only, but I use the whole thing. And then after a week, because I, I keep doing it for about a week, yeah? After a week, I take the whole banana as skin and all, and I stick it down into the earth at the root of my roses or my clematis. To be honest, any plant that I think needs a really good feed, I stick it right by the root of it into the ground. I've been doing that for years, so it works. Bone meal. Organic. Simulates root growth. Fantastic for trees, especially if you've got fruit trees or trees that you love, like magnolia or wisteria. Um, bone meal is fantastic. But it does attract like wildlife, like dogs. And um, well, on the back it says cattle, sheep, goats, and deer. <laughs> well, I don't have that around here. But dogs are quite attracted to bone meal, so be careful. If you're going to use it in your container um, if you're going to use it in your container parts then just stick bamboo sticks um, as a deterrent so cats and dogs don't dig it up because I think they like the smell bone meal obviously <laughs> our local florist has had her shop for about 30 plus years right and I said to her what tips have you got for me and she said Darling, get yourself tomato fertilizer. When you go into her shop, all the flowers are beautiful. And this is what she uses for every single plant. And I get a massive, what is this, two litre, because it lasts for ages, right? This is fantastic. This is tomato fertilizer with seaweed, and it makes up to 400 litres. It's gonna last you for ages. And again, you can use it on all your plants especially like herbs. This really does wonders for my sage and thyme. And I'm gonna invest in another lemongrass bush because I think the cats ate it. <laughs> I think they're attracted to lemongrass, I don't know. Or maybe there was a bug that took over it. I don't know, it was a time when I wasn't really caring too much about my plants, you know? So I'm gonna get another one and hopefully this will work. But also if you're growing water lilies, this is good. I swear by it. Tomato fertilizer. Now, another brilliant fertilizer is seaweed. This promotes strong growth for plants and lawns. If you find that your plants are looking a bit yellowy, I had water lilies for a couple of years I think three years and I didn't have one flower I did some research and I was told to get seaweed and a few drops of this every couple of weeks and I got my first bloom this is really good if you have fruit trees as well we have two cherry trees and we get delicious cherries every year so get some seaweed fertilizer and it lasts for ages you don't need a lot These are fantastic and you can reuse them. You can recycle these. When they're empty, I just get a tub of water. I put some tomato feed in there and some Epsom salts. And then I squeeze the feeders and fill them back up. And I use them in all our house plants and around the garden in container pots, especially in the dryer. 
um, weeks, you know, especially like autumn or winter. It's a very good brand, Baby Bio. You want big juicy roses. You need some rose feed. And you only use it twice a year, spring and summer. The first feed is in spring. It's literally like one handful around where the active growth starts. And the second feed is in summer. After the first flush of flowers have faded, if you, have, if you have roses and you really want them to look pretty, like very aesthetically beautiful and you want big blooms, you've got to invest. You've got to take the time. Fertilization and nutrition is needed. I bought this for the first time last year and this really did wonders for my indoor plants as well. So this is miracle Grow Indoor Plant Food Concentrate. And it's got a unique mix of nine nutrients. Fantastic. It's suitable for cacti, citrus, and bonsai. And it's true because I have a bonsai plant. We let the plane do it. <laughs> God, it's so interesting to see that planes are in the sky again. Yeah, this works. And it works for cacti, bonsai, and well, citrus and all indoor plants, okay? Recommended. And I like these concentrates because they last for a very long time. If you have garden friends, then you can share, you know? Put that there, I don't want it to fall again. Miracle Grow Sulfate of Iron. Now this is for, hold on, I don't know how to pronounce this. Ericaceous. Ericaceous. Pronunciation. I'm all about learning something new. If I don't know, I'll find out. Let's see. How to pronounce Ericaceous. Let's learn together. Ericaceous. Oh, I said that. Okay, good. Ericaceous. Ericaceous. <laughs> okay, so this is a soil conditioner. This is good for plants that need acidic soil. Do your research on that. Every plant you buy, you must find out what balance it needs. Does it need alkaline soil or does it need acidic soil? So I have a Ronodendron and I have a blueberry plant that is going to be delivered soon and it needs acidic soil, so, yeah. And it works for several weeks. You apply directly from the pack. It's good for roses as well. Um, Acers, hydrania's. Cause you know hydrania's, oh, heathers as well. Mm, camellia, azaleas. Um, you know with hydrania's, if it's not in acidic soil, they do survive, they live, but they either turn pink or blue. Yeah. Let me find out. I think that if it's an acidic soil, they stay blue. Hydrania's acidic. What colour? For true blue flowers, the hydrania's need to be grown in acidic soil. Okay, otherwise they turn pink. Yeah, so they need to be a pH 5.5 or lower. And I think I did some research and you can actually put um, vinegar and things like that in the soil to make it acidic. You have to get the balance right. You need to get a... Zai, pass me that um, measurer. Lay behind the sage, please. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is what you need. I need to get another one because I've left it outside so I'm not able to move it over to check my pH, so I can only check the um, moisture levels. But this is a three way, you check moisture, light and pH. 
and when you get this you stick it into the soil and it will tell you whether it's acidic or alkaline or too moist or too dry it's good you stick it right into the root of the plant so that's that now one of my favorites you can use this in the bath you can use it to wash your hair you can use it all around the garden I thought I'd finished it but I've got some more this is Epsom salts <laughs> and this is a I think 10 kg get it off Amazon and you can use them for so many things it's a very good muscle relaxant though if you want to use it in your bath water fantastic especially if you do sports if you've had like a, a good workout in the gym use Epsom salts in your bath water I use this little container to keep them in because <laughs> I keep the big tub upstairs. Now you can use them to make maracas. La 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 lamba. La 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 lamba. Da di da di da di da 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 da. But I just keep them with my garden storage supplies because I put them in my spray bottles. Well, I mix them in soil mixes as well. There's so much I'm going to show you, but Epsom salts are fantastic. There's a very famous gardener, British gardener, his name is Alan Titchmarsh. I think his name, Alan Titchmarsh, right? And I watched one of his programs and he was the one who said, Epsom salts, if you want really big flowers. And he's like a very loved British gardener. Another good garden essential is jute string, garden twine, garden string. You know, it comes in handy. I use it today to train some of the branches of the cherry trees. It's just good for all kinds of things. It's always handy to have garden string. And get yourself some hand cream. You can get yourself some good organic hand cream or garden gloves. I need some now. Ah, it smells so good. And another essential, get yourself a thermos flask. When it's hot, it will keep your cold drinks with ice cold for 14 hours. So when you're working out in the garden, in the sweltering sun you've got nice cool ice water or juice or drink whatever you want and in the winter time the cool a lot of the colder seasons it will keep your drinks hot for nine hours maybe you want soup and so on I remember them old time gardeners you know and um, especially like the Jamaican gardeners from back in the day and they used to come round and um, I used to have a gardener his name was Mr. Bailey. And Mr. Bailey had a stroke. And after his stroke, he spoke with a Chinese accent. He had like foreign accent syndrome, honestly. But he used to always come round and I tell you, that man was dedicated. He didn't want to be talked to, he didn't want to be bothered. He used to bring his little radio and his flask. But you know, good manners, they used to say, Mr. Bailey, you want a cup of tea or a cup of coffee? And say, no man, I have my flask. <laughs> And in that flask he would have his coffee, he'd have another flask, that'd have his soup. Yeah. And in the hot weather, he'd have his rum punch with ice. <laughs> this is a gingerbread latte in here. Mm, just right. 
anyway i hope that's helpful you know take your time you can't always get everything one time you just take your time through the year look out for sales you know garden center sales or things like that black friday you know it's not always about getting electronics and stuff that's the time to maybe get your gardening supplies Another, another good feed for the plants is honey water. Had some um, bottles of honey that had about this much honey stuck in there and I couldn't get it out. So I put it in some warm water to melt it away. But if you pour honey water into your plant's soil, it can attract pollinators like bees and that will encourage pollination but it's good it's a good um, feed for the plants it makes your plants more fragrant when they grow like jasmine freesia honey water You add 15 mils to each litre of water. Fragrant jasmine, oh my goodness, it smells beautiful. Ooh, okay, so I need to put this jasmine in this great planter that I have. I'm going to line it with a cocoa liner.
Okay, just got some perlite. Container. That smells divine. down into the soil. Beautiful jasmine. It smells amazing. Another tip to get rid of pests is a little bit of vapor rub and um, like Vicks vapor rub, any brand, it doesn't matter. And you just basically put it around the rim of your container pots. And that is a really good method to stop slugs getting into your pots and damaging your lovely plants. A little bit on your finger, it smells lovely. I love the smell of vapor rub. And you just do this. And just spread it as wide as you can. You don't need a lot. And it's a deterrent. As they crawl up the pot, they'll soon go back down. Cats also. As much as I love cats, they can also be a pest, especially stray cats coming into the garden. So they don't like the smell of this either. And that's a really good method. You can apply this maybe once a week. Sometimes it lasts longer. Little garden tips help, don't they?
like to say thank you to Caroline Gordon, a wonderful subscriber who sent me a photo of her beautiful garden. Wow, it looks so relaxing and good job on that patio, it looks great. Ten squirts of neem oil. Two caps of apple cider vinegar. Organic. Water. It's so strong. Let's shake it. Shake it. <laughs> and then I'm going to put some essential oil. It's 100% pure lemongrass. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten and a bit. Probably about 12 drops. This ten is enough. This is a good project for the children to get involved in but the neem oil I'm telling you it is not the nicest smell <laughs> it smells very organic okay. and also the drops that you use you can also write that on the bottle in permanent marker so you can remind yourself of what your mix was It's such a weird smell, but then you've got that lovely lemongrass that comes through and it smells beautiful. Oh, it's yucky and nice at the same time. <laughs> so I'm gonna so I'm gonna use a little bit of my crushed egg mix and the place that I know that the snails and slugs like to come to is around my canna plant which hasn't been doing well I bought this kind of plant about three years ago three years ago and it hasn't like fully grown it's actually smaller than when I bought it and that's because it's been damaged by the snails and slugs so I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of this organic crushed egg mix and see if that helps because I don't really like to use the um, the chemical snail and slug control you know the blue pellets I prefer to use as organic as I can you know it's just kinder to the earth so here is the patch where my canna is growing these three look okay this one is unfurling and these two looks quite solid these are a little bit weak there's one here that looks like it's I just don't even want to touch it I think they're so fragile right now so I had put some of the um, the pellets down, the blue industrial pellets, but I'm going to use my crushed eggs around it. They actually need to be a lot finer than this, so I'll just crumble these a bit more. They must be really, really finely crushed, otherwise it 
the effects won't work. But these are too big. And just hope for the best. I'm using an old invoice that I got from one of the plant orders. And I'm turning it into a cone funnel, like that, and put it inside. It's so simple. And I'm going to put some of the Epsom salts. That I've kept in this container. When you put Epsom salts into a spray bottle, mix it with water, it does wonders for plants if you spray their leaves. And I'm talking about all plants, guys. <laughs> Give it a good shake. And just missed. And this banana infused water is brilliant for roses and all plants to be honest. Yep, it's definitely happy hour when they get a drink of this. Well, that's the end of my daily garden chores. I hope you enjoyed it. I wanted to share that this is going to be my fragrance of the evening because that jasmine fragrance just does something to my senses. It's so beautiful and this is probably one of the most beautiful white floral perfumes in the world pure poison by deal only have a little bit left and i treasure it it's so gorgeous so i'm going to read this book the encyclopedia of essential oils the complete guide to the use of aromatic oils in aromatherapy, herbalism, health and well-being. And it is so fascinating. So I'm going to sit back and chill and read and learn something new. <laughs>